in video three of our boot camp, we're going to talk about squares and square roots. So these are things that you can figure out with your calculator, but it is useful to know at least the first 12 squares and square roots off the top of your head, just because it helps you speed up your problem solving and it can help you recognize patterns without having to you know, slog away into your calculator. So what do I mean by square? Well, square, something like x squared, is just the number times itself. So if we have, in the case of x, we have x is 1, x times x, 1 times 1 would just be 1. If we had 2, it would be 4, 3, it would be 9, 4, 16, and so on, right? All the way up to 10 is 100, 11 is 121, and 12 is 144. If you can memorize these first 12, that would be really useful. Also, that this pattern also applies for the negative. So if you have negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, and so on, they're also going to turn out to be positive. So the square of a negative number is going to be a positive, and often this is something that they're going to test your knowledge of, or at least your, your recognition of. So it's something to keep in mind. Note as well, you can go in the opposite direction. So if we had some value x, we could figure out the square root of x, and that's basically figuring, figuring out, OK, if there's a number, what two equal numbers multiply out to give you that number. So in this case, if we had a number like, ooh, I don't know, 64, the square root of 64 would be 8, because 8 times 8 is 64. If we had something like 81, it would be 9, and so on, right? It's essentially just the reverse. If squaring goes this way, then square rooting is going to go this way. Um, and they're going to be uh, opposite. Uh, so this is, well, this is going to be square root, and this is going to be square root. So these are opposite operations, right? One is going to go in the other direction, one in the other. So that's it for essentially squares and square roots. And again, you can pop these into your calculator, but being able to memorize the first 12 can really help you improve your speed. And as we know on the SAT, speed is of uh, great value. So where are you going to use squares? Well, you could use them a lot. You could use them in algebra, uh, especially quadratics. That will be important. Uh, any kind of factoring or anything like that. You'll use them in a squared plus b squared equals c squared and you'll use them in areas. So squares, circles, stuff like that. So squares, square roots are pretty important, uh, and they're uh, what, something you need to know. Another thing I'm going to suggest is, what about the squares of fractions? Now, the thing about the squares of fractions is it goes in a direction that you're not, maybe not expecting. Normally, if we have 2 and we square it, we get a bigger number, 4. But what happens if we square 1 half? Well, if you put that into your calculator, you're going to get 1 half squared is 1 over 4. And we know that 1 half is greater than 1 fourth. So when you square a fraction, you're actually getting a smaller number at the end. So 1 fourth squared is going to be 1 over 16. And remember, you got to remember how fractions work. Even though this denominator is bigger than this 4, 16 is bigger than 4, it makes the fraction itself smaller. Now, this can get rather confusing with negative fractions. So something like negative a half, what do you get there? Well, you're going to square that. You're going to get a quarter again. It's going to be positive a quarter. In this case, however, negative one half is less than one quarter, right? Because uh, the negative number is always going to be less than any positive number. Now, the fraction itself, if you kind of you know erase this negative, the fractions are such that one half is greater than minus a quarter. But since this is negative, it flips the relationship. So just keep that in mind. And if you ever, again, this is another example of kind of remembering rules, forgetting them. Uh, you can memorize all these rules, but you can always reproduce them. So you can always say to yourself, okay, self, what's one third squared? Well, that's just one ninth. So that tells me that one ninth is smaller than one third. So fractions get smaller when I square them, right? So you can always come up with your own examples to remember the rules. There's really no need to memorize.